So it's been particularly evident over the last decade that the world's climate is changing faster than anybody really expected. Climate change presents an existential threat and is magnifying the range of challenges that we're all facing, such as drought, floods and cyclones, and adversely impacting on livelihoods, on things such as critical infrastructure and productive sectors. So Australia has very long supported climate change action through its development assistance program. And here, as an embassy, we're very proud to say that we have a number of projects in Zimbabwe that draw on Australia's expertise in finding lasting solutions to long-term challenges with climate change for communities in Zimbabwe. Our main objective is to capacitate farmers to be able to take their produce to the market and get good returns. In Umkuza district, farmers have been farming for years, but they have not been able to commercialize the work that they are doing. When a farmer is enrolled as a beneficiary in the Engage project, we train them on how to plant, take care, harvest, grade, and then package and sell their produce. So through the trainings that we offer in Engage, they are able to sell their produce at a price that is profitable to them and able to improve their livelihoods. The specific uh, training which I got from the project is uh, special on marketing. We learned that uh, for you to get uh, a good market, you have to produce good quality crops, whereby it will be easier for you to market your crops because you'll be producing quality crops. The project is important to farmers especially in the context of climate change in Zimbabwe, in that they are equipped with the technical know-how to be able to farm and produce despite whatever climatic shocks and be able to earn an income for their household to be able to build resilience and absorb the climatic shocks. Since our region is very dry and there's less rain in our region, so adapting our agriculture practice, especially on the drip system, the drip system saves water and also on mulching. If you mulch your crops, you find that it preserves water so that you will be able to have a good harvest. The project enforces cooperation in that our farmers are trained on how to work in groups. When they work and farm in groups, they are able to supply in bulk to the retailers. They are able to supply for a longer period of time as we may have 10 to 15 farmers in one group with the same product and they can supply the farmer for a long period of time. At first, we, I used to work as an individual farmer without even thinking of other farmers and how they operate. But with the Engage program, we find that when we are doing the trainings like in the farmer market school, you meet other farmers, you discuss and you find that there is power in group work. Through the project, farmers have access to quality seedlings, which they will then plant, uh, nature and harvest. What you're seeing here is the nursery where we plant the seeds to make up seedling, which we then supply to our farmers to ensure that they produce a quality product which they then send to the market. This is an Australian aid supported project which is also supporting the engaged farmers to make sure that whatever they take to the market gives them a good price and in turn good returns. the cold room, they are able to come and grade, package their produce, which they will then supply to the market and sell at a good price, which improves their livelihood. The future plans of the Engage project 
uh, to go on to the next step, not only to encourage our farmers to have good produce, which is viable on the market, but also to encourage them to learn uh, value addition so that they don't only supply fresh produce to the market, but they also supply produce that is applicable to the end user. My hope for the future is to, since we've got a big infrastructure like this, is to increase my yields at my farm and use these facilities to do my farming activities. So everything that we've done has been bottom up and it's come from the community and it's been built on deep engagement. So our work's multifaceted. On the one hand, we've been working to secure a wildlife area and then work with communities to protect that area to ensure they can benefit in the long term. So Australia and Zimbabwe have a lot in common with each other as well as other countries of Southern Africa in terms of our climate, our economies and our unique biodiversity, just to name a few things. Australia, of course, too regularly suffers from periods of major droughts and floods and, of course, bushfires, which have become much more intense over the few years that we can even think about. And Australia has experienced, therefore, firsthand the need to have to adapt and respond to those changing climatic conditions. So as an embassy in Zimbabwe, our climate engagement includes working with partners to find ways to protect our natural resources and address the challenges of climate change and its impacts on our land and economic livelihoods to reduce increasing levels of poverty and to lift well-being. And all of that is of shared interest to us all. Our anti-poaching team has been such an amazing thing to be a part of. We went out and just started doing recruitment amongst the surrounding local communities. We had about 220 local community members turn up to our recruitment days. And from that, we whittled them down to about 45 who went through an intensive training and selection program. And then we landed up with 14 who we hired as full-time scouts. Yeah, we are rangers community <laughs> You know, we're covering a massive area, 14 scouts in this huge area. It's not going to address all of the poaching issues and, you know, the solution is much bigger than that. But it's a start and it's the way that we're starting to build trust, build credibility with the communities and to change lives one step at a time. So this isn't just about the issue of protecting and preserving our environment. It's also about addressing loss and damage from climate change economic and livelihood challenges, as well as food and nutrition security. So for that reason, our international cooperation on climate change is very much a priority for Australia as one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century, which requires all of us to work together to bring about a brighter and more sustainable future for us all. So as an arid country in Australia that experiences a fair share of fires and flooding and droughts uh, and extreme weather patterns, 
all too frequently and with agriculture too being such an important part of our economic well-being as a country, Australia has a lot of experience and expertise in mitigating the impacts of climate change and natural disasters on our food and water security. So we feel that we have a responsibility to share our hard-earned knowledge, experience and unique perspectives with others so that we can all benefit from what we've learnt, just as we're very much committed to learning from others about how we can better tackle the challenges at home. We're very proud of the work that the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, or ASIA, does in supporting cooperation between Australian agriculture and climate adaption researchers with local partners to implement climate smart agricultural practices. ACR is a statutory uh, Commonwealth Government Agency. We've been established for approximately 40 years. We're part of the Overseas Development Assistance uh, Portfolio. And we were set up specifically to assist smallholder farmers and rural community improve agricultural productivity, improve livelihood outcomes for smallholder farmers, and do so in a way today that we describe in a carbon positive approach. So the Transforming Irrigation in Southern Africa project uh, was established to address a major problem in Africa. The major problem is that governments have invested hundreds of millions of dollars establishing very expensive irrigated agricultural schemes, but only two-thirds of the land area was being farmed. And of the two-thirds that was being farmed, that was not producing more food than the surrounding dryland agricultural fields. Our job in TESA was to partner with our African research and government organisations to find solutions. What we've achieved in the Transforming Irrigation in Southern Africa program is to turn that situation around, to work with our African partners to find ways in which irrigated agriculture can produce more food, can support more jobs, and can be profitable for the local economies. The work that we're doing is attempting to address one of the world's major problems. We have a global population that's approaching 10 billion people. We need to be able to feed those people with the same area of land, with limited water resources, and yet produce more nutritious foods. And so what we're doing is sustainable intensification of agriculture, getting more food from the same land with limited water. Australian National University. The TISA project has introduced what we call smart water management uh, tools or soil monitoring tools, chameleon and full stop, that aim at seeing and knowing the soil moisture within the deeper layers of the soil. With me here, I have a, a chameleon a reader. It's basically a simple tool that is used by smallholder farmers. By plugging it in, they can tell a different depth how moist it is. The green colour at the top shows that there's a sensor at 15 centimetres. It's, it's indicating that the soil is moist. Then the blue at the, in the centre is showing us the sensor at 30 centimetres indicating that the soil is wet and at 45 centimetres it's also wet. So given these colours it tells us that it's not, it's the soil's condition is uh, ideal. Therefore the farmer will make a decision not to irrigate once he sees the readings. They can prepare to irrigate in the coming days. What we're doing now is we're using this kernel of, of the work that the TISA produced, which is more sustainable irrigation schemes, and asking some deeper questions about circularity. And what I mean by that is, now that we know irrigation schemes can be more efficient in terms of the use of the water, how can we turn that into livelihood benefits for smallholders, and how can we do so by also reducing our carbon footprint? 
what we're doing now with the Circular Food Systems Program is working with communities to identify how they can add value to the crops that they've grown, to the livestock that they're producing, so that they capture the most jobs and the most economic return. We're also asking how can we take the byproducts from that processing and put that back into the farming system so that we're having a lower environmental impact, generating more businesses and lowering the farming input costs. The second key intervention that we've undertaken is a social process of bringing farming communities together to map out the barriers and opportunities for more sustainable livelihoods, to lower their cost of producing food, to increase their access to market and to improve the profits, so that these irrigation schemes are the engine for food security, for jobs and for economic growth in Zimbabwe. When we started off the project, uh, the irrigation scheme yields were comparable to the dryland yields, which is never supposed to be the case. Now, irrigation yields have been uh, probably tripled. It means more money for the farmers and more yield, and their livelihood options are growing. We've had the opportunity to partner with some wonderful researchers, but also the government of Zimbabwe and local communities to come together to jointly identify the problems and prospective solutions and to bring together our collective knowledge and expertise to ensure that we get a better food system that supports sustainable livelihoods.